been a couple yeah, of weeks there. because... I think they're out there. Are you out there? It was a holiday, <laughs> and then Mr. Wyatt got a little not feeling well. I got a little not feeling well is right. I was not uh, apt to be talking for very long. Had all kinds of weird things going on. So I chilled. So here we are, feeling a little bit better now. And uh, with this light, it really does something on my glasses here. So I'm going to clean them real quick. Just... Anyone who has glasses knows I shouldn't be using that on my glasses. That's first and foremost. But, well, looks like we've gathered together today, and we're going to have another discussion. We are. We've been talking about a lot of different things lately, uh, traveling around in the car, um, and uh, we finally have an older topic that we've been talking about for a while that we finally brought forward since I was sick for a little while. But uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, Blame Game. Yes. And I probably should tell people who we are. Yeah, you haven't introduced You know, I want to make sure everybody knows that what we're having. This is time for another What Really Matters. I'm Todd, and this is my beautiful wife, Michelle. And we just have conversations about various things that really uh, affect relationships, uh, married, unmarried, all relationships. Uh, there's a relationship out there. It generally has principles that we touch base on. Uh, and we've had a variety of uh, vlogs that we've done in the past that you could reference Mm -hmm. in relationship to what we're talking about here tonight to help fill in the gaps of anything that we might mention tonight uh, that Just you might need more. We need to do something about the glare on your glasses because yeah. I don't like I'm it. I'm further away, but uh, we're into some anti-glare glasses. Maybe we need to, yeah, have to do something. But, anyway, uh, not important. But I'll be looking at you half most of the time anyway. Yeah, so I know, but go. still, I'm just saying there's <laughs> got to be another way to do uh, this where you're yeah. Where isn't there. We so. have a ring light and it likes my glasses quite a bit. So today we're talking about the blame game. Yes. What does that mean? Well, um, in a relationship. Or if I anyone. well, let me go. This is so when we started this, I had. I know we're going to talk about the meaning of this in a little bit, but yeah. this is what I had found. I had come across this originally, and I thought about, of course, me because. I always think about me. No, that's because me. Um, no, that is definitely you. Um, but I was thinking about steal my thunder. Well, I was just thinking about all the growth I've had in the last four or five years. And there's lot. there's been a lot which right. has kind of upset your apple cart a right. little bit. Considerable um, for you. I'm kind of slow on the upturn on it, but I've had some. But you've you've really carried the lion's share of the load there. Um, but it says. Real growth is when you start checking and correcting yourself. Instead of blaming others, you take your power back by being responsible for your life. And so um, that really kind of hit me because it was like one of the things that I've really done. I, I'm patting myself on the back yeah. because God's really, really helped me with this. And that was to start seeing myself, my own actions, um, and seeing myself. And be able to come to you and instead of doing a blame that like this is all your fault and right. I don't like you and but I can now tell you this is what's going on here because this and right. and with that I've become stronger it's made our relationship stronger and you tell people our super my superpower is communication it is. but it's all it's all a God thing because you know he's the one who's done that so when I saw this I thought of myself um, because so many of us forget about practicing communication we think we do it naturally and it's not a natural thing talking right. is emoting is but communicating that's that's a little bit different right that requires planning and action it does and i'm not you ignoring just, you that but you just I, don't oh i know yet i am because she's running through a scenario of several things I've got, anything from okay. tying us into other things or looking up okay. work that she's well, got i'm back <laughs> okay so um that brought me because you told me you wanted me to do the starting part and then you've got a lot of stuff yeah. that you've added so going with this one of the things that i started realizing is how much uh, families will blame each other so you have people who go around because it's way easier to blame somebody than to take responsibility i mean let's just look at our world today 
even with what's going on with the racism, everybody's blaming each other, you're wrong, you know, but nobody wants to take responsibility for nobody whatever wants, their own actions nobody are. Wants to fill the gap. Um, and I'm not, of course, totally against racism, don't, but I'm just saying there's, there's nobody taking accountability for their own actions. Um, uh, with COVID, it was all, you know, the fighting with the mask. It's all blaming. Yeah. You're not, you don't understand if you don't do this and if you don't take care of this, then you're not my, I did not put on earrings still all right. day, you even probably for couldn't tonight. Have mentioned it and they would never And know. well, it just drove me nuts. Anyway, so, <laughs> but you take, so then you take that, but. You won't be to able the, to stop looking at your ears now. Whatever. To the families, but we go to the families now, right? So couples and. And, you know, whether it's against their parents or against their kids or, you know, siblings against each other, but mostly spouses and, it, and especially being locked up during the quarantine time, you know, how much do you think was going on? So I was thinking about that and I was thinking about all the tough times people go through and they want to immediately blame because I know how many years I could blame you for all kinds of stuff that... Um, wasn't you know some of well, it probably rightfully I so never. <laughs> just saying some of it you may have deserved but the reality is when i was throwing blame how much responsibility was i taking or was i just being a martyr which is what you used to call me so talk about that a lot and we're going to get into that further down the line so then i decided one of the things that um, it says in in our opening thing was, you know, we start jumping to conclusions about the other spouse. You know, we just automatically think we know what the, the spouse is thinking. So we jump into right. the blame mode. And my biggest one that I'm at fault with is I constantly, this is my whole thing. This is, this is who I am. Is it? Yes. Because I do so much for you, which we've talked about all the time on here, but that's who I am. I like to do things for you, so that's not a, that's not a complaint. I'm not complaining, but when I need help, I expect help, and I don't get it. And right. so my immediate reaction is to get angry and want to blame you about whatever the situation is. You're not bringing in the clothes laundry basket, and I'm carrying it in, and it's all heavy and all the stuff, and you know whatever. And so I've had to retrain myself because you don't automatically respond to the fact that you hear me struggling. You just let me struggle because you're strong. You're going to get it. You know, that kind of thing. I'm either not paying attention half the time. Uh, or which is probably 99.9% .9 of the whatever time. Whatever the noise is, is but, struggling. You'll so, ask for help. Right. But instead of jumping to blaming, it should be jumping to asking for help because right. that that Change, totally changes, changes the, the atmosphere right. right so that was kind of where I started with the blame game I started thinking about that and then I'm like I know that there's other families so we that's what we're gonna talk about Yeah. so we've heard about a number of people explaining various scenarios like that and and how they kind of get into the mix uh, in places where they didn't ever really want to go but they end up there a lot and it usually has to do with responsibility uh, in the blame game so what I had written down here for the blame game um, being the topic uh, we're trying to avoid yeah. the blame game we're not saying to do it we're yeah we're don't yeah do don't it. don't get into blaming everybody else for whatever you're going through I so, mean there <laughs> there are definitely times that was somebody else's fault. sure I mean but you know we get it but didn't really get you there but the wagging the finger and the right. tongue doesn't really generally get you to where you want right. to be but in discussing the blame game, I brought up some other parallel topics that we're trying to grow into. Like, in overcoming the blame game, we're going to develop some real growth. And that growth is what it takes to prevent the blaming. Well, yes. So there's so, going to be some tools mixed in with this yes. for real growth. We always want to bring tools to the table. And so part of it is uh, we're going to cover a couple of reasons why you don't want to do it, a couple of reasons right. why, well, before we got to that, uh, gonna... some reasons why you know what's going to be helpful but then we have some things that's gonna just the tools yeah we have some negatives and some pluses and yeah. we're going to run down a list of things yeah but in conjunction with the real growth we want to make sure that you're in this process our goal is to take your power back 
Yes. You keep giving it away, throwing it away. Right. You're spewing stuff, and all yep. you're doing is negative, negative, negative. That and means it, other person's and being powered up. And it doesn't always have to be with your spouse. So these right. things that we're talking about, oh, it could be life. you can apply to coworkers. You can apply to any family members. You can, can apply yourself. to yourself. Well, Make some of this we yourself. do talk about ourselves in here a little bit. Um, but it can be applied in a lot of different areas. There's a lot of areas woes me out because, there. Why is well, this happening? Yeah, it, and there's one that yeah. I struggle with a lot, which you know about. We're not going to talk about it right now, but that I keep thinking I'm going to go in and conquer the world, and I always wind up leaving totally defeated. You know, and I'm not totally defeated, but you know what I mean. Like, it's my struggle. Right. It is the thorn in my side, as Paul would say. Right. And so I struggle Right. So okay. What are we going to so do? We're, we're the, taking the power back, and we're and the last one we're going to do is we're going to check and correct ourselves. So we're going right. to go through this process, and the whole thing, bottom line, but you weren't taking this. responsibility. Yeah, and I'm going to read my inter, my intro. Yeah. I didn't get into that yet. Okay, because <laughs> y'all, 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 I started this. A there's month no y'all. There's just us. And no, no, we're talking to y'all. No, we're here. And. We did this. I did this. Are you blaming me? Mo nope. Oh, that sounds like I'm you're blaming telling me. telling on you. Yeah, that's not I much different. I did this. Oh, my gosh. I had this ready for a month. And you know, all you of a sudden. think we set this up. It's fine. All of a sudden, he's decided that he was going to rolls. rewrite everything that hey, I had prepared. Camera's rolling. And then he goes. And then he goes. But you need to start and do this. And I said, well, no, this you is your show tonight because this is what you've got. No, no. And now Are all of a sudden, he's. Night? We are. I'm going to complain. I'm not blaming. I'm really not complaining. I just think it's funny. Because uh, you just told me you weren't going to be in charge, and yet you are. Yep. That's just how I go. That's fine. Go ahead. Well. Go ahead on, babe. When it comes to placing blame in a relationship, I'm starting at the beginning here. It's in your notes. <laughs> it's almost See, I don't always, even know what matter. we're doing. Just listen to me. It's always, you want a joke? I got a joke. Okay. No, I'll tell you the joke later. It's almost always... I thought always, you were starting with the joke. No, I'm going I'm to end with the joke. Or I'm okay. going to throw it in somewhere where it needs to okay. be Okay, where, right, where are we? Right here, the intro. Okay. It's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> the intro, it's just right there. Okay. <laughs> I'm pushing my luck. It's almost e always easier to see the faults in our partners... Yes, that's true. ...than it true. is in ourselves. It is. And that's his, we all know that, right? right. I mean, we kind of well, try to deny it. Well, let me ask it. you this. Do you see any faults in yourself at all? Very seldom. Okay. Yes. I'm very quick to let you know but, that I don't perceive... I am but some pretty, of I'm, us... I'm self-aware, but not about the faults. But some of us only see our faults. Yes. You're your your worst enemy. So you see no faults. Yeah. I see nothing but faults. Yeah, well, we got a lot of issues. That's why we've had a lot to overcome. I, well, let me rephrase that. I don't see like nothing but faults now. But I'm just. Yeah. Those are the kinds of people we're talking mm -hmm. about that you've got to get past some of this in yourself. You have to recognize your own faults, and you have to realize that you're not nothing but faults. There's right. more to you. Point but anyway, being, keep going. That when we Sorry. are pointing out faults with each other, we're going to go back and forth with it. Yeah. The fact of the matter is. More times than not, since most people are flawed, almost oh. everybody's flawed. There's not oh. most people. Everyone's okay. flawed. <laughs> some of it's like, right. Unless you're Jesus. Some of it's right about you yes. and me and yes. vice versa. Right. So there's got to be a grain of truth in there somewhere. Yes. Unless one of us has a real psychological issue. That's in their story. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But we're just talking about not basic tonight. relationship okay. stuff. So it's always easier to find the faults in your partner than yep. yourself. So um, everybody's full of flaws. These self def self protective defenses. When you when when you throw a, 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 a blame. blame at me, a flaw uh -huh. at me about my flaws, yeah. it's natural. Yeah, you're going to re respond, and you generally respond. Well, okay, with but are in you built innate responses that you've done your entire life? But are you responding or reacting? Because when you react, Those it's out different. of control, and when you respond, that's what we talked about before. So yes, yeah, so a reaction totally is. Is, yes. is directly to what you just said. A response is a thought out, concluded, re, re, right. that you're going to yeah, yeah. converse so, back. Yeah. So, yeah, the first thing we're trying to teach everybody, stop reacting and yes. start responding. Right, which and means that requires to take a break and think about it. But we're getting process. to all and that we're later. Run, run so. through all that. Okay. So, so am I going to talk about one and two, the negatives? Because that's where we are. No. Uh... You were running through the, fr the frustration. He has 
totally taken over. Uh-uh. The many ways we get hurt throughout our lives and help shape our, our defenses. Right. Negative mm-hmm. past, I'm finishing the first part. Negative past experiences, particularly those from our childhood, this is what I was trying in the introduction, can leave us on guard as adults. So that's, we're just letting everybody know. We understand where it's coming from and how it's coming across. And then you were going to start on your scapegoat. Yeah, well, I'm going to add to that because yeah. I come to you all the time. Part of the part that's helped us so much in the last few years is when I recognize why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling instead of blaming you, Correct. I start off with, I recognize this is coming from either how I was raised or you know things that had happened to me in the past or right. whatever that's kind of got some things wacky in there. So this is not about you, this is about me. However, I need to point it out so we can talk about it and get past Correct. it. But that's not a blame. No. That's a recognizing I have... That is to prevent something. the blame. Yes. What you're doing in terms of trying to eliminate a blame game from going on is we've worked out communications where we've talked a lot. That's the number one first thing. you got to communicate on a regular basis and know each other. <laughs> We're together you, so much. If though. you don't know each other and yeah. you don't talk, then you have very little basis to start the conversation. Since yeah. we talk a lot... You can talk a lot too, even though easy. you're not together as much it's as way us. But easy. We do have the benefit. If you have, a, of course, we drive in the car. Not, you know, well, now it's only about 35 minutes each day because, well, there's well, no, not a whole lot of people on the road. Oh, uh, well, no, right now we're back <laughs> up. Trust me, we are. Okay, so here's why you don't want to do the blame game. Um, I'm sorry. This yep. is the negative things to yes. your relationship. A couple of this them. This is what the blame this game is, does to you. Yeah. It will, uh, first of all, your spouse isn't your scapegoat. So, you know, your spouse is supposed to be there to be your support. We're supposed to support each other. So if I want your support, I can't keep throwing you under the bus. With right. everything that goes wrong, we have to work together. Um, and so we, even if I'm frustrated and I'm angry with you or hurt, I should still take a deep breath and come to you and say, I need help here. Let's have a conversation because you're not my scapegoat. You're my helpmate. Um, And then also it drains passion from the marriage. And y'all know I'm all about the passion. I'm just saying you, you don't want to cause if you're constantly negative um, to your spouse, who wants to be with that? If you're constantly if I'm constantly just throwing stuff at him, if every time you throw something, it puts distance. Then it's between going you. to. He, why is he going to want to come and spend time with me? Because all he sees is negative Nancy all over oh. him. Um, so the reasons why you want to stop the blame game are uh, well, a it's going to make you a stronger person, and I will get to my thing. But I think you have a um, time for me supposed to do that because I don't know anymore. Um, it proves your love for your spouse, and I'll tell you why. Because when you start changing, um, well, it kind of depends. So when you start changing, you take it, <laughs> you take responsibility for your actions. Your spouse gets proud of you because he sees. I'm talking from my own experience. Okay, so put this in how it's going to fit for you. They see you trying, and they see you making the changes, and then they kind of want to live up to that. And then all of a sudden, there might be for us. This is what happened. He was really happy, and he loved the change, and he loved the confidence. And then, and then all of a sudden, there was a side of him. It's every man's duty to support his wife, right? Well, it is. Right. And then, and then there comes a time that he gets all fearful that things are changing, and Wait, you know, you're moving too far away from me. Yes, and so that I'm taking on other things that don't include him, even though everything I do includes him. It's still a right. fear. Um, but so that so anyway, it proves. It proves that I love my family and my spouse if I want to self-reflect and see my flaws and my faults and take responsibility for my actions because I become a better, stronger person. Um, I don't become a, what is the um, what? Victim. victim. You don't want to be a victim so all the time. Martyr, victim, what? Yeah, yeah, well, because those are, that's, you know... The victim mentality, you hear all this stuff all the time, but you don't think it's really out there. I mean, for me, I was like definitely the victim mentality years ago. Right. Uh, I mean, not even as relatively as Why five is years, everything but 15 happening or 20. to me? And then yeah. you lash out. And, and that's say, what we're going to get to. Okay, so the last one before we get into the tools, I'm talking fast because I know we're going to wind up going uh-huh. forever. We got a list coming. Um, <laughs> it's going to strengthen your marriage. And here's what we're going to talk about. This, this one's just going to be a little bit. 
Um, challenges happen, right? They do. Do we have challenges in life? Everybody does. Okay. Do we cause our challenges? Sometimes. 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 Check do we your not? challenges at the door. Yeah. Okay. So last week, yep, we went out. Yeah, we ordered some food. He was gonna go pick it up. Oh and man, talk about it. bad timing. And got food ready. Got yeah. Go out there, get in the car. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. There's dead not, car I mean, battery. There's working just fine. Yeah. So that um, actually, what, wasn't even that long ago before it. I guess it was the night before, but wasn't starting. It's been over a week now. No, I mean the, from the when I last oh, started. Oh yeah, yeah, it was from yeah. that night. It we was got unexplainable. Home. Yeah. So the car battery's dead. Normally we would have flamed each other. I mean, not normally recently. Normally in the past. Or we'd have gotten all upset. Oh, it's or a disaster. Or we'd get upset. Yeah, it's Can't all afford of... it. But because we've been How through it, and we going to shift our way through this piecemeal something. Yes, but you know, because poverty mentality, all that stuff. But because we've worked through other challenges over the years, yep. and because we've come to work together as a team, now instead of flaming <laughs> each other through these things, we can kind of dismiss some of those and even if it's self brought on we can work through it so instead of blaming or well, first coulda shoulda did, woulda why looked, didn't you we looked for solutions well we did right well away. the first thing you did was like did it was it my fault did i do something you came in you told me and i said did i leave the lights on you know did i leave a door open so we both wound up taking responsibility for what could have but it just could've turned been. out it was just a and dead thought, battery. Okay, but. quick solution. If it's just a, if it's just because something like that did happen, then the battery's right. fine. Right. We should charge it. Yeah. And we thought, call your dad, see if we can get a charger. We used to have one. We don't. It was yeah. actually his. But uh, decided that because of events that are going on, it's better just to go ahead. It's an old, it wasn't that old of a battery, but right. we just got a new battery and moved on. But uh, you know, we certainly could have gone through. We had another plan and we could have had in place. If we didn't have the money, we could have charged the battery. And, but that battery charging process would have provided us another opportunity for failure if later on we went out and we got trapped at the office or store yes, or whatever. Right. So we decided to go well, around that by solving some of these issues rather than just blaming, oh my gosh, it happened to me again. Well, no. Right. You know, I have here. Well, we've grown Check if you've that. allowed this to happen. Yes. Well, if you set the scenario okay. up and there's a possibility in your life, this is just using a battery as the example. You can pick whatever the topic is in your life. Did you solve the problem or did you postpone the problem? Or did you ignore the problem? Right. Um, and these are all the things that put you in a mindset of blame and defensiveness that looks for other people to blame. If you can't find other people, then you blame just life. You know, life right. is always, well, okay, now you're blaming life. So that's really sad. You can't even find someone else to blame. And generally, if you find yourself blaming life, uh, it's probably a you problem. Probably. Yes. Sometimes life does happen and okay. you can blame it. Time but that's on. how we go from there. So from that, we actually came up with a, a variety of uh, basically 12 pr primary things that we can look at right. in this situation of the blame game uh, right. and how to recognize and deal with it. Okay. Number well, the, one is easy. Well, number one is recognize when you're being blamed. Um, and that, that means if I come to you unfairly and start blaming you for something then you should recognize, wait a minute, she's blaming me for this. Instead of reacting, you quietly think about it and respond and say, wait a minute, you're blaming me for this. Let's discuss this and have a conversation. But during this time, while we're talking about recognizing the blame, whether or not you're the one doing the blaming or whether you are getting blamed, um, it is called... There's a, you can control what happens to you. It's called a locus of control. There you go. Um, so you either have an internal locus of control or an external external locus of control. And um, you have to decide what it's going to be. And the internal is, I make things happen. Look what I can do. I can determine my future. I'm going to make this happen. I'm not depending on anyone else. I, I'm not, it's not your responsibility to, to write my stuff. It's not your responsibility to do these things, even though in my mind, years ago, I probably would have thought it was your responsibility until I learned this. So if you have an ex, ex, external locus of control, that is when you allow things to happen to you. So there's right. nothing I can do about my future. Why bother? Everything's just, why does everything happen to me? 
this is always wrong, everybody's so mean, yada, yada, yada. And um, and that's the pathetic side. The other well, side is there are things have you grow. cannot control in your life and you need to there, recognize what those things are. Yes, so around. you really will have to find a balance, but for the most part, you want to grow the internal yep. locus of control, control of things you while can. causing the external locus of control to become weaker. <laughs> We're laughing because our son's deciding now to choose to chop up a sandwich. But it's funny. Anyway. Okay. So <laughs> what, what's our next one? Well, a part of the locus of control, because I'm going to just finish because this is all together. Um, and you'll take on the next one or whatever. I don't know. But realizing your partner's not you. This is all part right. of this. And that is, you know, I have to know that you're not going to. Well, you have a whole bunch written there. So you might want to talk about that. No, you're, the, the, these two things, realizing your partner is not you and, and uh, you're recognizing when you're being blamed, if you're always blaming everywhere you go, something you're right. putting blame on someone everywhere you go, you have yeah. one common denominator. Yeah. You. Right. So you must be generating the problems in your life and you need to start solving these problems before they become issues. Right. So... Right now, I think we have like a small plastic fire uh, going what on. What <laughs> is on fire in there, Weston? Uh, something in the toaster. All right. So, and the other part of it is. <laughs> Sorry. It has to do with blaming, triggering child defen defenses. Uh, when you're when you're blaming people, you are going to be auto oftentimes that can trigger a lot of uh, automatic uh, defenses when you realize your partner's not is not you, you may be thinking, you don't, you don't have the same problems they have. So whenever right. you're dealing with an issue, you may not be sensitive enough to be recognizing that other person. You might not know the other person, might not be we your partner. 30 minutes into this okay. and we're on number two. Number three. Practice gratitude. Don't be I've, a, I've been doing pretty well at that, I, I think. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty good at telling you and Weston both, thank you, I appreciate right. your help, and, and I mean it, you know. Yeah, go down um, the list, make sure you tell everyone, I'm you, really good with everybody but you. You are. <laughs> it's 9 o'clock, people. I'm not the one interrupting this time. Um, because you... <laughs> this is unscripted. ...actually exactly. tell everybody I how do. much you appreciate them and everything they do for you. But there's one person that you I don't, don't because I you're like an extension of me, especially at the office. So you're like part of me. So I forget that you're not me because you're constantly we're constantly left and right hand. So I don't sit there and thank myself throughout the day. I thank others, and I got to remember that you're autonomous. You're a separate human being. You're not. Right. We're supposed so to be we, just one thing, but, but we're not. We're two. And together we make up one relationship right. under God. Yeah. So I got to make sure we separate you-ness from me-ness. Yes. <laughs> okay, so moving forward. Good thing I didn't we're, we're move on to we because that's a different word. <laughs> Talk openly about your expectations. <laughs> So what is what do you want to talk about with that? Uh, well, I mean, just you need to sit down as a couple and define your family. What are your expectations for your family? What are your expectations in your relationship? relationship? Right. And if you can't define that, and there was a time, people, that this mister was quite the little hiney because... I beg your pardon. I... Well, I gave him. I'm adorable. Some, I gave I him some expectations, and these are things that I was expecting. And he said, and I quote, "I don't hold this over his head. I laugh at it with him now, but I'm telling y'all, men, this is a bad, bad mojo to set for your relationship." Depends. Let's hear it. You don't. <laughs> really? Because he said, if you would just lower your expectations, yeah. you wouldn't have any problems. Right. Meaning, let me give context. No, that. no, I'll give you the context. The context is shut up and go away. He wanted me to shut up and go away so he didn't have to do anything. 
So anyway, you do no, need to. That's good, and that's one of them. That was one of it. Is shut up and go away aspect of that. There, I'm gonna not deny that. But the other you part can't. of that, and the flip side of that was, be careful, and it happens all the time of establishing relations of ex- expectations that are unlikely to be, or expectations that you have. So he's trying that to say I, don't I expected way too much of him. Do you that or you want to go you, over what your expectations? No, I just think <laughs> that there are times that you're like over expecting way up way too optimistic on a variety of different things and I was trying to get the point across was establish realistic expectations and you're going to be disappointed a lot less not as what opposed you said. to you having said rainbow lower expectations. your expectations to zero. I know. Yeah. So what you have to do when we're talking about this you have to have a conversation to talk openly about the expectations and at that time um, I was going to school, I was homeschooling, I was working full time. And my expectations were that I would come home to, you know, groceries being bought, um, a house being decently picked up, and maybe dinner on the table. Because I had to live where I was working for four or five days, sometimes for a couple of weeks at a time. So my expectations was that when I'm home for 24 hours, that I wouldn't have to be doing the cleaning and the laundry and the cooking. Right. And yet, four men in the house didn't do it because my expectations were too high. <laughs> so that's, you have to discuss what reality is going to be. And if reality is that they weren't going to do it, then it, the conversation should have been more of, you know what, we all do this too, so let me do part of <laughs> we're it. We're not doing it. I'll hire someone who will. <laughs> Something, whatever. Just work out your expectations. Yeah, be talk, your man wife. Our whole point with this is to talk openly about it without getting in each other's faces over right. it. Uh, practice. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, where, where this, are you? Practice active. Talk. Okay. Yeah. But now we're going to talk about, about this all the time. So just pra- a little bit. Yes. Practice active listening. We have a whole uh, video about that. How to do Under it. our communication video, you can get it. Give them a quick example it. of what it means, just real well, quick. Well, active listening is, I'm going to say, uh, this, is how I, this is how I feel about an issue, about whatever. My, my feelings have been hurt, or I need this, or I would feel more loved if you would do this, if you stopped doing this, if we worked together on this. And, Instead of. And, or just that. And yeah. then your job is a, an re- active listener is to repeat everything I just said without interjecting your solutions or antidotes no or fixing. comments no fixing, or sarcasm man. or anything. During this time, It's purely then, about communicating. So when yes. you tell me you feel a certain way about a situation, or you would yes. like something, yes. and this is how it makes you feel. Yes. It's kind of how you do it. This yeah. is what I'd like. This right. is how it makes me feel. Yeah. If you were to do that, it could make you feel good or bad. Right. But most of the time, it's like, hey, if you would do this, that would make me happier. Or it would make me less stressful. Well, and a or lot of times it's because we want to... have more time for well, things that are you, important. Because I will tell you things, and, and since we've learned this, I've used this pretty well. You don't ever... I don't know that you ever repeat back to me, though. Uh, and I don't, I'm don't. i not picking all this we out do, right now. We do, but it becomes more fluid as you get better at it. You don't have to sit there and do the whole I, long dialogue. But when you're starting off, just go through the, just go through the motions. Well, yeah, but I'm not sure sometimes when I'm telling you things, if yeah. you understand, because... We don't always. We're discussing it right now. Just give right. us a second. So That's what we're supposed to be doing most of the time. Yes. Right? So when I tell you these things, right. there's sometimes because right now there's concurrently there's one repeating one, yeah. and I talk to you, but you don't ever repeat back. But I'm still having to do the. That might be our problem. That might be our problem. Yeah, we so we it. just had a breakthrough. Here's your epiphany right here. So it is. I'm gonna have to make sure you actually. So ladies and gents, make I sure your spouse. Listen listens and repeats right. because if they're not getting it then okay right. so we've done practice active thank listening. you for helping us move on because we are way right. behind and then after you after you've gone through that process of active listening understand that you can control how your partner reacts to you but you can control how you react to them okay can't control how your partner reacts to you you can and I put it a big circle around it. It says you can control how you confront your partner or your spouse or your relationship, your other person relationship. Yes. You can control that to an extent. 
That other person always has the right. They have free will. They can do whatever they want. But you can take away the triggers, and you can take away the hot spots, and you can take off the rough edges. Or you can keep poking the bear. You could keep poking the bear. I like poking the bear a he lot. He does. He likes poking the bear. Yep. It's, he does. It's, it's funny fun. to me sometimes. But yes. She doesn't think it's funny. Nope. Even when I'm doing it just to try and make it be funny, it just gets uglier. But... You can control the situation. Again, we're going back to the locus of control. Yes. Try and take control of the things you can. Yeah. If you can prevent a blow up, then do it. It's a, your responsibility. Who needs the kaboom? It's your responsibility to prevent it right. with what powers you have. Yes. And when you've given a nice soft delivery, if the person on their side comes back all hard and harsh, that's on them. Yeah. But you still have to deal with the situation and continue to continue. To try and control it to be not to control what they do but to take the edges off so you can get to a real adult discussion right. without yeah. emotions flying everywhere you can yeah. have nice soft gooey ones that's fine the whole idea isn't to have emotions negative or positive in a big direction right it's to have a truthful discussion that reveals light to whatever it is we're talking about yeah all right that leads to don't take it personally Yes. That's what we're talking about. Okay, Keep this is out. usually a girl thing, being really honest. Don't overfeel it and Girls, don't overthink it. We have emotions that sometimes, and we take it back to things that, you know, maybe were said to us when we were little or how we felt when we were little or through junior high and high school. If you were married before and you're going into this relationship or from parents or whatever, and we just tend to um, take things way more personally than than men do, for the most part. I mean, I'm not going to kind of do a broad stroke, right. but sometimes it's not. But a lot of times it is the it is the women who take it personally, um, and then we we take it on, and I get all butt hurt over something you've said. Right, just let it roll off your back, will you? Yeah, but okay. And then the flip side <laughs> of that would be. You know your wife's personality yep. or your husband's, and you know that what you're about to say or do, even though you know you're joking and you think it's funny, but you know it's not going to land and you do it anyway, you know that there's going to be tears. Right, those are games. Yeah. Oh. But we <laughs> don't play mind games, do we? Uh, those are for self-entertainment. Warped self-entertainment. But that takes us back. Do you do that? Sometimes, yes. Absolutely. People have watched me do it in public. Uh, they've watched me do it on the show. <laughs> Come on. Hey, okay, keep going. All right, next one. Uh, after you've gotten into a situation and it's not flying right, and you can feel it, and you can smell that it's not landing right, you've got a situation, you want to pause before you do anything. You can count to ten if you want. You can do whatever but you're going to take a pause so you're going to respond instead of react so we're going to yeah. make sure you break the cycle which goes back up to ours that we said earlier yes, break yeah. the cycle okay. stop the emoting break it stop yep. it it's in your control you can okay. stop what comes out of here you can even stop what shows up can here you? yep you can can you really you bet you you bet you can huh. i bet i can too do you i think most of them can Ah, yep. I'm kind of thinking maybe somebody doesn't necessarily know. Oh, no, just know. because you can't, just because you can control it doesn't mean you're going to. No, nope, he likes the games. Yep. Okay. So you're going to pause, you're going to take control by breaking the cycle and responding by saying something, before you say something you could regret. Okay, okay, part of the practice active listening that we talked about just a minute ago that we have a whole show on from prior, um, don't be critical. So when I'm talking to you, I'm going to say I. I'm not going to accuse you. Yes. Because that does a lot of blaming. Yes. And this never we're, works. We're trying to fix uh, it's words or the fingers. situation without um, bringing your spouse down. Right. It's I supposed want, to be a I solution, really want, not an attack. I want to feel better. Right. And I need you to help me feel better. But you're not going to want to help me feel better if I'm attacking you. Yeah, no one wants to make a bitty feel better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hot spots. Wait, I want to go on. One, no. one thing with pause. It says, it's important. I want to think. It says, reflect on your patterns. It's a pattern issue. When you're breaking and you're stopping, it could be you that's part of the equation. 
Is okay? it really? It's not you. Whoever it is, it's recognizing. I know it can be themselves. Well, you just full of sarcasm, then, aren't you? <laughs> I'm just saying. So once we calm down, a lot of down, this just needs to be self-reflection. Oh yeah, you know, like I'll watch this later and go, oh, I'm talking to me. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> calm down you and step. Not. Once you calm down. We can start to reflect. That's yeah. part of the response mechanism. So you're yes. going to stop and think, what do yeah. I have? Yeah. What have I contributed to this? Or what part of this do I play in part of what's going on? Because of every situation, there's some, even it could be a grain of sand, but there's generally way more than that. Right. Uh, involvement, it's hard to have a fight with only one side. There's generally some grain of truth, even if it's just one, in terms of what you have to play in it. And sometimes that one piece can be the trigger especially if you're stronger in the relationship development issues than the mm -hmm. other one. So mm -hmm. that means that follow the, for a while, as you're working through this, the responsibility of the one who has the greater knowledge has the greater responsibility of trying to control that. But I want to make sure you reflect on the fact that you have patterns of behavior in your life of things yes. that you know are going to reoccur. That you, you mentioned it earlier. To, yes, there's you triggers in to, your life from when right. you were little, when they happen on the TV screen, or they happen when we're walking across the street, or when we're driving down the road. Some of those things that you inherently have had in your life that have become yes. psychologically imposed in your demeanor, yep. both of us, all of yep. us have this, that yeah. you're going to respond, you're going to respond, and then you're going to be, oh, okay. So before you get to that, as you're re 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 uh, stopping to reflect on your patterns, it's important to take notice of the moment and ask why. Yeah. That's the contributing. Does my reaction seem like an overreaction? That's a first, that's a big one there as well. And that's why I put a big circle around that. A lot of times we may overreact, calm down, keep it level, and move forward. That's, I just wanted to add that to the pausing aspect, making sure people recognize patterns of behaviors. And then you went to the don't, don't criticize. Being disappointed, frustrated is pretty natural. Yeah, because that's where we do the eye focused. Where you don't want to. Yes, you, you just went through all that. Yeah, I don't want to. Don't, don't blame. Don't start whining. Don't be a crybaby. But yeah. then the next one is going to be recognizing hot spots because right. there are going to be things uh, which actually just ties into what you just said. Right. Things over your over your life, uh, over your relationship, even because right now we're kind of talking about. So let's talk about you know you and me. Mm -hmm. You don't technically have a lot of hot spots of things that I have done that you would bring up from the past. I've already forgotten. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. It's just um, <laughs> such a good wife. You don't have that's anything That's what it bad. is. That's what it is. No, because there's a couple of things that, but it is all in the past and it was such early years, but you didn't have it from anywhere else. Right. In other words, for me, the struggles that I still face today have been here my whole life. So, I mean, uh, every from from very young childhood to much, right? You know, and so, and even at the very beginning uh, with you. So, I mean, you kind of got lumped in to all of that kind of stuff. You don't have that. The things that I did at the beginning of our relationship that you would want to throw back at me right now i mean we don't throw anything at each other but you know what i'm saying you didn't have anything else to tie that to because there was it wasn't like a system that just had just kept going on right. and yeah. on and on um but recognize your hot spots ladies don't bring out most of the time oh, again this boy. is the women um don't reach into your hand men men do it it so, men do it sometimes but it's usually because you just want to be ugly you know what I'm saying? Like the women do it just because they're like, "Oh, you're just you're so mean." You remember all the times you did all this, all this, all this, all this. That's why you're doing this right now. And none of them have anything to do with each other. And a man would say, "Well, yeah, but you know, you remember that ugly purple dress you wore and you looked fat in it." No, I'm kidding. I don't know what else he would say. But, yeah, what guy would say but, that? Uh, if you're trying to get back at me, yeah. you would definitely. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, but well, that's kind knows. of my point. That's not that's violating at least four of our all, principles above. Yeah, all of it. Right. So just don't bring up things from the past. Keep your current conversation about what's happening right now. Yep. And with that, I'm gonna say though Hello. that well, I am gonna say there's a couple of times that I will bring up something with you. That I'll say, um, in fact, we did it tonight. Yep. I was telling you about a, talk, uh, a show that I don't want to watch. 
um, because of stupid stuff, and it ticks me off. But I mean, it's a dumb show anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm not a big TV person. But, but in doing so, trying to make my point, I had to tell you something that you had said when we were first together. Yep. That that was triggering in me. Yes. And but I wasn't meaning it. I wasn't holding it over your head. I wasn't blaming you. I'm then. You know, I'm not mad at you. I'm not hurt by you. There's just some feelings of inadequacy for me. And in order for me to not have to sit here and struggle with that, it's better to just not watch the show. Right. But at, but at no point in time... We haven't worked through that part, so let's not But at no it. point in time did I use this as a blame to you. Right. So... Why are you watching that? You know this was going to cause this in me. There are times that we can talk about things from our past and our relationship right. without it being thrown at somebody. Right. So that's what I was going to say. Okay. And, 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 and finishing along with that thought is the fact that talking about the process oftentimes can be called case building. I mean, when yeah. you're building a case to try and justify our or deny somebody of something. So in this particular case, one of the important features I wanted to talk about in case building, since it's a huge problem in many relationships, is that we start to see our partner a certain way if we start to build them in a box and we start building a case against them. It's like, you do these things on purpose. Right. You do this to hurt me. Yeah. And you then you start building your case by finding things to support that narrative. Right. And now, when you naturally look at that other person, you no longer see them for who they are. Right. You see them for who you want them to be. Yeah. Who is hurting you. Yeah. So now you're seeing through a filter. Yeah. And all the goodness is blocked out of that person, and it can destroy your relationship mm -hmm. because you've got a distorted view of that other person, and it's primarily... Not from the other person, but right. from you casting, yeah. and it's, here comes the other part um, of interpreting uh, what that other person is. So it's your perceptions that you're casting on that other person and causing behavioral problems in the relationship. Yeah. So uh, it's a projection, is the word I was looking for, that you're projecting the things yes. you don't like about yourself or onto other somebody things, else. Onto someone else, right. so you can loathe them. Right. Properly. <laughs> well, and, um, okay, so I'm going to do the conclusion. Yep. Uh, well, I'm also going to tell you, you know, the blame game kind of goes to yourself as well. Um, and, you know, used to, uh, that was my guilt. I thought he was perfect, and I did everything wrong and was just the martyr victim person. And I could see all my faults and all my flaws, and I just... You know, hated myself, lots of self-loathing going on. Um, mm -hmm. And then over the years, I kind of got through that. Probably um, the boys, uh, oh, probably after my mom died, a little bit about that time, I don't know, 15, 18 years ago, um, started making those changes. But in the last five years, uh, there's just been, God's just, you know, used a, a, an area to kind of transform me. So I've stopped blaming myself and started taking responsibility and changed where my Lotus was inside or out. Right. And then, um, you know, was able to grow with that. And you've grown with it. You've kind of liked it and kind of have it depending on days. Right. Um, so. It's always good. All of it's good. Yes. It's just, it's just it's there's the growing pains. Yes. I was going to say that's there's the part pains. is you're like, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm not liking this, but I know we're going to a well, higher and plateau sometimes there's and a, it's going to be Better, but there's a little bit of a but it's fear uncertainty about where we're how we're going to get there because there's a little bit of fear and yeah. you know since we're talking just about how tall where is this corn we, stalk going to grow yeah well and two how much do you you know you have um, I'm going to call you out on you know you have a sure. trust well I mean we call each other out I call myself out all the time That's right trust you have a hard time with totally trusting God you trust God uh, completely and yet. You need him to give you every detail of what's about to happen. Right. So when you're watching me you grow, should share more. yes. So <laughs> so when you're watching me grow, oh, you're, actually sharing more. You're very proud of the fact that I'm growing, and right. you're thankful to God that He's using me and growing me. Right. And at the same time, 
you want to know where it's going. Right. That's a, and that's a because, faith issue. Yeah. Well, it's not. You, you have faith and you have trust. You're yeah. just a, you just kind of have a controlling nature, not like you're, right. you not know, you're not lording over. Right. You just you just I need like to, have to my know. Ducks in a row. Yes. Um, okay. So don't the focus, call me at the last minute and expect me to wing it. Right. It ain't happening. I'll just stay seated. Focus should always be on empowering yourself, because. I can't change you. I can only change me. That's I correct. can only focus on where I'm going from here. And um, so I'm the only part in the equation that I can change. I can tell you and that in, in conjunction with that, if I may interject and rudely interrupt, we've learned that over the years is that the biggest power you have of changing me is, is me changing. changing you. Yes. <clears throat> I know that sounds terribly self-serving, but it works both ways. That if well, you're really but trying God to God actually get, works that's my it point. that way. There's your, there's your talking point right there. Yeah, God does it. And y'all know if you've watched this at any point in time ever that one of my greatest frustrations with God, and I don't have a problem with saying that because he knows it, um, was whenever I would start praying for things to change at home, especially with my husband, God change him, God would always point out, well, what about this in you? And I hated it, every second of it, because it just was so unfair. Um, but the reality is now, it's like, okay, God, I see my husband, and I see this, and I'd like him to go this direction. What is it that you want from me? Because that yeah. means I need to go a certain direction. And, and if, and well, I've got a whole Obviously other the same thing. Principle. There's a whole other like part we're we talking can talk about, about it. but from a woman to a man do it. No, well, it no, 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 it works around. both ways. We just haven't talked about it from my perspective because this is what we're sharing in terms of the, how, the way we've experienced well, it. Well, because a lot of the the changes have been, well, I mean, he's changed a lot too, but um, I was always, you know, the wife and the mom who stayed at home, you know, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen, didn't do the makeup and the hair and wore moo-moos as he called them and all oh, this that's kind right. of stuff Moo -moos. and so the changes that really like mr magoo just then just uh changed most of the changes <laughs> just happened for me yeah. because my life had to go a different direction when my kids grew up and um you know all that kind of stuff so i think we are at the end and he has a <laughs> he has something he wants to she, share she, with you. So okay. We, we said everything we need to say, right? Oh yeah, we're All right, yeah, so we're way past. Thank you for listening. That was our and little diatribe for the day. We had to make up for a couple of times missing. I know I just touched my face. I shouldn't do that. Oh, I've touched my hands it are clean. I've washed tonight, them. But... I've washed my hands numerous times. So don't touch your face. That's our our word of wisdom for the day. Stop doing that, and uh, listen to some of the things that we have here, and try and put them in action in your everyday life. With that having been said, since blame is the topic, I have a little punny on the way out. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead on. My neighbor blamed my neighbor blamed my He's gravel. He's laughing and he it's hasn't funny. even started. It's so stupid. My neighbor blamed my gravel for making him fall. Turns out it was his dumb ass fault. <laughs> it's funny. Come on, that's funny. You know that's funny. I could have presented it better, but there you go. There's because your, you were already laughing. I was laughing. Didn't it's you have funny. another one? Nope. I could, there's another one under <coughs> it, but not as funny as that one. Okay. You want another one? You probably shouldn't. Nope. Okay. We're good. Are you going to pray for people? <sighs> yeah. Okay. Father, I thank you and I praise you and I thank you for the words you give us to share with everybody. And I just hope that we uh, do justice by, as we present each of these things, <laughs> each week or two or three, whenever <laughs> we're going to try and keep this on a weekly basis without other things getting in the way and we just thank you father and we pray you uh, take these barriers and and uh, help us uh, just kind of get these things going every week to just help if i would dedicate myself more frankly there you go and father we just thank you and we just ask that you bless each and everyone out there who's listening and trying to build their relationships to be closer to you and in doing so helping them build themselves to be closer with those loved ones around them their family friends and even workers and other just friends in general and all relationships we just thank you for uh giving us a way and uh helping us all find tools and methods that we can use to uh, help uh, build those relationships to sustain uh, a higher level each of us needs to overcome the obstacles in our in our way that is kind of the calling of christ is for us to overcome we're overcomers and uh, we just thank you that we can all stand in there 
and, uh, and overcome these things for these relationships to become stronger, more passionate, more loving, more fulfilling, and that ultimately builds into the joy that we have. And we should always have that joy. Everything else, the joy is always going to be held there. We just ask that, you, that we can feel that every single day. All we got to do is reach out and claim it. Thank you, Father, for the ways and wisdoms that you have for us each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There you go. Okay, so I guess... <laughs> Facebook doesn't have a way I for wish me to Facebook had a little from over here. Thing that so would turn off, but we there will you go. say good night. Good night, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Hope to see you.